friends, my name is Kayla Roach. This is Elsa. And today I'm going to be rehousing my juvenile green bottle blue tarantula. This enclosure currently houses my juvenile Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens, or more commonly known in the hobby as the GBB or green bottle blue tarantula. I made this enclosure by simply soldering ventilation holes in a small plastic storage box. It measures 6 by 4 by 3 inches and was a perfect size for my sling. I'll put the link in the description. It's from Canadian Tire and it comes in a variety of sizes. I will be upgrading my tarantula to the small terrestrial microhabitat by Zilla, which measures 8 by 4 by 4 inches. This product comes disassembled and includes a waterproof base, clear acrylic panels, a locking latch, and silicone bands. This product was very easy to assemble and the assembled unit is very sturdy. Some key features of this product are the locking latch, the crystal clear acrylic for optimal visibility, and the cross ventilation which we tarantula keepers absolutely love. Next, I'm making my own substrate blend. This species of tarantula is native to an arid environment and this will reflect in my choice of substrate. The base material for this blend is topsoil. Next, I will add a small handful of loose coconut fiber. This will help add volume to the substrate. I'm including cypress mulch in my blend to enhance the texture of the substrate and to give it a more naturalistic look. The key element to my blend is play sand. This will prevent the substrate from retaining too much moisture as this species is sensitive to humidity and like I said earlier, thrives in an arid environment. Last but not least, I'm including some dry sphagnum moss to my mix to top it off. In their natural habitat, this species of tarantula lives among thorn scrub, grasses, and at the base of succulents, which is why I chose to plant a couple succulents in this tarantula's enclosure to further replicate its natural environment. I rinsed away the existing soil, roots, and leaves to assure that the plants are clean and free of any fertilizers. Next is my favorite part, which is hardscaping the enclosure. I'll be using some small cork pieces for this step. For the water dish, I'm using a 0.5 ounce plastic feeding cup since it is quite shallow and there will be no risk of my tarantula drowning. Next, I will be incorporating artificial plants to further enrich the environment and to serve as webbing anchor points since this species is a heavy webber. Here is the final product. All I have left to do is fill the water dish and we're ready to rehouse my tarantula.
I'm using a pair of rubber coated tongs to gently coax my tarantula into the new enclosure. And as you can see, this is why it's very important to have a catch cup ready when you're rehousing a tarantula. this video then please boop that like button leave a comment too if you like if you enjoy content relating to herpetofauna invertebrates and more then please consider subscribing to my channel and turning on my post notifications and then you'll know every time i post a video you can also find me on instagram at kayla's.critters where i post on a daily basis about all my animals thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon Bye.